When people talk about hormonal imbalances, they mainly talk about the sex hormones estrogen and progesterone. However, there's many other hormones that can become imbalanced and can contribute to your headaches and migraines. Hi, I'm Dr. Katie and I'm an osteopath here at Melbourne Headache Solutions. And today I'm going to talk to you about which other hormonal imbalances can contribute to headaches and migraines, uh, what they can cause in terms of symptoms and what you can do about them. So most of the hormone levels in our body are controlled by this thing called the hypothalamus, which is a part of our brain that controls homeostasis or sort of a regulator of our body's internal balance. This internal balance is controlled by the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis or the HPA axis for short. This system controls reactions to stress and regulates many body processes, including digestion, immune responses, sexuality, energy storage and expenditure, and it's responsible for a wide range of mood and functionality disorders, including anxiety, chronic fatigue syndrome, those sort of things. Some significant hormones that are influenced by this HPA axis include insulin, which is a metabolic hormone, cortisol, which is a stress hormone, and thyroxin, which is an adrenal hormone. So the hypothalamus is responsible for the release of these hormones with coordination with the pituitary gland, which releases them into the bloodstream. When these hormone levels rise or drop, it's the job of this HPA axis to feed back that information to the hypothalamus to even these levels out. The same things happen for increased levels of hormones. However, when this feedback loop goes wrong, we can run into problem, problems which turn into hormonal imbalances. The factors that contribute to this dis dysregulation are your genetic background, early life environment, and current life stresses. So increased or decreased levels of thyroid hormones are very common, and I see this a lot in practice. So some common symptoms of a thyroid hormone imbalance can include heat or cold intolerance, muscle weakness, extreme fatigue, weight gain or loss, uh, irritability and anxiousness, as well as some hair loss. Some reasons why these problems can arise include low thyroid secreting capacity or an inappropriate secretion of thyroid hormone. Hypothyroid or low thyroid hormone can also be linked with other types of autoimmune disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis and type 1 diabetes. Increased stress hormones are also something that I commonly see in practice. Some common symptoms of uh, increased stress hormones can include hair loss, increased heart rate or palpitations, lack of sleep or insomnia, irritability, jaw clenching or grinding at night, and of course, increased in headaches and migraines. So dysregulated metabolic hormones can lead to conditions such as insulin sensitivity, insulin resistant, insulin resistance or diabetes, and, it, and diabetes if left unmanaged. Some common symptoms of a metabolic hormone disturbance include headaches and migraines, difficulty losing weight or gaining excessive weight, lethargy, brain fog, increased thirst, and increased urination. Thankfully, most metabolic hormone disturbances can be managed with dietary changes and weight management. So some general advice to help you manage your hormonal imbalance can include maintaining a healthy weight. This helps adequately regulate your blood sugar levels. Um, and when you're eating, eating really mindfully. So when we're stressed, our gut can't actually absorb the nutrients that you're eating. It just runs straight through you. So taking some time to think about what you're eating and actually chewing your food rather than gulping it down. So maintaining a healthy diet is also important. So making sure you're maintaining a balanced diet of fruit and vegetables full of protein as well uh, and making sure they're full of vitamins and minerals that can help regulate your hormone levels and your overall body health uh, avoiding and decreasing stress is something that's very important for this hpa axis regulation the stress hormone cortisol has been seen to have this detrimental effects on other hormones within the body and can actually act as an inhibitor for that feedback loop that we discussed earlier so decreasing your stress levels can help to maintain other levels of hormones as well. Getting enough sleep is also very important. So sleep helps our body heal from the day before or days before that. And it's constant lack of no sleep can actually damage your body and places a lot of stress on, stress on the body. Decreasing alcohol can also be helpful for some people. So sugary and alcoholic drinks can lead to this really rapid rise in blood sugar, spiking your insulin levels and inhibiting other necessary detoxification processes of the liver. And also decreasing caffeine, which is a hard one for lots of people, but easing into decreasing the amounts of caffeine or replacing to decaf can work really well. 
So caffeine works as a stimulant into your central nervous system. And by decreasing this stimulation, it can actually help decrease the cortisol levels, therefore affecting your hormones. And lastly, but most importantly, is finding the correct diagnosis for you. So hormonal imbalances often go undiagnosed for many years, leading to a large array of side effects, especially with thyroid conditions. So lots of symptoms relating to hormonal imbalance can actually interrelate, as you could probably hear earlier. So obtaining a correct diagnosis will help you with the management of the condition in the long run. Following up with the GP for testing, if you think you may have a hormonal imbalance is important, especially if you've related to any hormonal imbalance symptoms with the thyroid. Um, yeah. If you think your hormones may be contributing to headaches and migraines, or if you're unsure about the cause, fill out our questionnaire. The link is above so we can help you identify what's causing the pain and help you on a better path to managing your headaches and migraines. If you have any questions, please ask them below and we'll get back to you. Thank you for listening.